Hello, my name is Farooq Yahya. I'm an art historian specializing in Malay manuscripts on magic and divination. In this video, I'll be showcasing a selection of these manuscripts that have been digitized as part of the Endangered Archives Program, or EAP. These fascinating manuscripts are from Indonesia, specifically Sumatra and the Riau Archipelago in the western part of the country, and the island of Ambon in the east. Dating back to the 19th and early 20th centuries, the texts are in the Malay language and written in Jawi, a form of Arabic script. While most of the manuscripts are in the codex format, that is like a modern day book, there are some that were created in other formats such as scrolls. These manuscripts cover a wide range of topics, including spells, talismans, and various methods for predicting the future. They offer insight into the issues that people faced in the past that are still relevant today. They deal with universal concerns such as seeking protection from life's challenges and wanting to have a glimpse into what the future may hold. At the heart of these practices is the belief that all requests for good health and well-being are ultimately directed towards God, who has the power to heal and keep us safe. One of the most intriguing aspects of these manuscripts are their illustrations. They depict human beings, animals and spirits, as well as diagrams, charts and various types of talismanic designs. These images are incredibly important for our understanding of the art of the region, especially drawing and painting. This manuscript here is from the collection of Aswande Shahri in Riau. It is probably from Palembang in Sumatra and is datable to the 1890s. It is a compilation of spells and talismanic designs that provides a glimpse into the magical beliefs and practices of the time. Let's take a closer look at one of the talismans from this manuscript. In the middle of the page, we can see a talisman designed for protection against pests, specifically mice or rats and wild boar. It is shaped as a six-legged creature with a long body that contains an Arabic inscription, which for some reason has been written upside down. According to the text above it, this talisman is to be drawn on a piece of goat skin and hung in the middle of a rice field or buried in the ground. This is another page from the same manuscript. Here, at the bottom left corner, we can see a magic square. A magic square is a grid of numbers in which the sum of each column, row and the two main diagonals is the same. This particular square contains the numbers 1 to 9 and the sum of each row, column and diagonal is 15. In the Islamic world, magic squares were often used as talismans for various purposes. According to this manuscript, the magic square is to be written onto a white bowl filled with water, which is then drunk by a person experiencing difficulties in giving birth or suffering from an illness. This practice of writing sacred texts and designs onto a vessel and filling it with liquid for consumption is a common form of Islamic healing. Malay manuscripts can also come in the form of scrolls. They are made by joining multiple sheets of paper together to form a long continuous band. Scrolls were employed for different purposes. Some were used for writing religious sermons to be read during congregational prayers, while others were filled with talismanic designs and supplications for personal use. Talismanic scrolls often contain a series of magical designs known as the Seal of Prophethood or Mohonumbat in Malay. The seal of prophethood refers to a mark on the Prophet Muhammad's body located between his shoulder blades. According to tradition, it was produced after two angels opened up his chest and purified his heart. It's said to have resembled a mole, a hairy protuberance or a pigeon's egg. In various parts of the Islamic world, including Southeast Asia, 
images of the seal of prophethood were believed to have talismanic properties. What we're looking at here is an example of the seal of prophethood from a talismanic scroll in the collection of Hussein Hatue in Ambon. These seals are typically circular in shape, with concentric circles often containing sacred texts such as the Shahada or the Islamic proclamation of faith and invocations towards God. There are also usually strings of Arabic letters or numbers with esoteric meaning that are still not yet fully understood. At the four corners of the seals, you'll find the names of the four rightly guided caliphs, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman and Ali. They took over the leadership of the Islamic State after the death of the Prophet Muhammad and their names are often found on talismans. Below the images, there are texts that explain how to use the seals and the benefits they provide. For instance, the text here states that whoever gazes at this particular seal every Friday morning and night will receive protection from God and will go to heaven. Despite the belief that the seal is located between the Prophet's shoulder blades, this manuscript has multiple images of seals on other body parts. One of these seals is said to be on the Prophet's right ear. The corresponding text claims that anyone who looks at it will be loved by others and be safeguarded from harm. Besides magical rituals, Malay manuscripts also contain methods for divination. These techniques can help predict future events or obtain information about things that cannot be seen with the naked eye. One of the main purposes of these divination techniques is to figure out the best time and direction for certain actions, such as traveling, healing patients or getting married. The manuscripts often contain tables and diagrams that can assist someone in determining whether a specific time or direction is lucky or unlucky. One technique involves the use of a set of eight animals arranged around a compass. This manuscript from the collection of Raja Hamza Yunus, currently held at the Balai Maklumat Kebudai An Melayu Riau or the Riau Malay Culture Information Center, contains a couple of diagrams of these eight animals. In these diagrams, each animal is placed opposite one that is antagonistic to it. For instance, in this diagram, we can see that the cat on the top left corner is placed opposite the mouse or rat in the bottom right corner. The deer on the bottom left corner is opposite the tiger and the crocodile on the right hand side is opposite the fish. There is also an eagle at the top opposite the elephant, although usually in these types of charts the animal here would be a serpent instead of an elephant. While the manuscript does not provide specific instructions for using the diagram, we know from other examples that it was probably employed for traveling. The user would count anti-clockwise from the north and stop when they reach the number of the date of the journey. If it lands on a weak aspect, that day would be considered unsuitable for travel. One useful feature of the EAP website is the ability to zoom in on individual images, allowing us to see details of the animals and their depictions. For instance, we can observe how the eagle is depicted in profile with its wings outstretched, one above the body and one below. Meanwhile, the tiger is depicted in an unusual way. It has a crest on its head and its body is covered with multicolored scales. We can also see the materials and techniques used in creating the illustrations. For instance, the outline is drawn first in black ink before the details are filled in with color. This type of analysis can help identify workshops or centers of production and place a certain manuscript within a specific time and location. There is another form of divination that involves paper wheels. This technique uses a circular piece of paper divided into segments to form a wheel. Each segment of the wheel has a prediction with a piece of string attached to its edge. 
To use it, the paper is folded into a fan shape. The user then selects a segment at random by holding or waving the paper over their head and pulling on the string. The chosen section will reveal the answer to their query. Each prediction is also associated with the Prophet or Angel of Islam. For instance, according to this paper wheel, if someone selects the segment relating to the Prophet Yaqub or Jacob, which is the one on the left here, they will be safe when travelling by water and will find it easy to make a living. On the other hand, the segment relating to the Prophet Ibrahim or Abraham, which is the one on the right, is not good. It is best to avoid any undertaking and if someone is ill, it will be difficult for them to fully recover. The EAP website allows us to see manuscripts from different regions and explore links between these magic and divination practices with those in other parts of Southeast Asia and the wider world. For example, this is another page from the Aswan de Shahri manuscript that I showed earlier. At the top of the page, there are some designs that consist of short lines ending with curls or loops. These motifs belong to a kind of magical script used in the Islamic world called the Lunette Sigla. It is thought to have originated from the Jewish tradition. The text in the middle of the page, meanwhile, is a talisman known in Malay as Pumbarat Lida. It can be used to prevent others from speaking negatively about us. It has a design that includes a six-pointed star, also known as Solomon's seal in the Islamic tradition, in reference to a ring that was owned by Solomon. Solomon, or Sulaiman, was a prophet and wise ruler who had control over animals, birds and jinn. His magical power was said to derive from this talismanic ring. On the right of the six-pointed star, there is another symbol with eight looped corners known as Chinchin Sulaiman in Malay or Solomon's ring. This symbol is also an ancient design found in many regions of Southeast Asia and South Asia and may represent the earth and the eight cardinal directions. We can see the same designs appearing in other parts of Southeast Asia, such as in this Cham manuscript from the collection of Ba Den in Vietnam. The identification of shared practices, imagery and textual content serves as a valuable tool in comprehending the intercultural relationships and transmission of knowledge between societies in Southeast Asia and the wider global community. Overall, these magic and divination techniques offer insight into the beliefs and practices of the people of Indonesia and demonstrate the ways in which manuscripts were used as practical guides for everyday life. Thank you for watching.